Hello, my name is Mike Summers, and I am the Wind Instrument Brand Manager at KHS America. These brands include Jupiter Band Instruments, Azumi Flutes, Altus Professional Flutes, and XO Professional Brass Instruments. Today, I'm going to show you the techniques that you need to know for cleaning your clarinet. After you finish playing your clarinet, it's important that you get into a routine of cleaning it properly before you put it in its case. After you disassemble the instrument, you will swab it out. Most clarinets come with a swab. You can buy them from your local music store. It's basically a soft cloth that has a weighted end on it. And you are going to just drop this through each joint. Uh, this is the upper joint. And we're going to uh, drop it through, making sure we don't awkwardly press down any keys. And gently pull it through. Just be mindful there are some, uh, some pieces inside this clarinet that stick through the body so that you, you might get your cloth stuck on that. And if it does get stuck, you want to uh, hand it to your, your uh, band director or take it to your local music store to, to get it removed. If you force it out, you could bend those pieces or break them off and then your clarinet won't, uh, will not play properly. So I've swabbed out the upper joint, and I'm going to do the lower joint. The lower joint doesn't have any uh, parts protruding through the interior of the body, so this should be good to go. And once we've done that a couple times, we're going to do it, uh, I, I try to do it once through the top, once through the bottom, just to make sure that uh, any moisture that was in there gets removed. So the lower joint is done. And then uh, before I do anything with the barrel, I want to take the reed off of the mouthpiece. And so you remove the mouthpiece cap, make sure the reed is off, because you don't want to damage that in any way. And before I do anything, I'm going to clean that off slightly and put it back in the reed case so that I don't damage it. Put that in the case, remove the ligature, and then the mouthpiece. And then I just swab out the barrel a little bit, both sides. done, and then the bell. This one, you don't really need to use this swab, but it is, sometimes you get, you have a, a hard time getting up into the top part of the bell. So then I just use a, a clean cloth, untreated, to clean out any uh, cork grease that might be hanging around on the edges. Also removes the fingerprints off of these parts. And that's ready to go back in the case. Same with the upper joint, being careful not to push down uh, on any keys that may cause them to bend. And I'm just going to wipe my fingerprints off of this uh, so that uh, it removes any residual oils that may have accumulated while you're practicing. And if you have a lot of grease built up on here on your tenons, <clears throat> you can you can remove. Uh, the cork grease that has uh, accumulated around the edges. You don't really want to spend too much time taking the cork grease off of this because you'll just have to put it back on, uh, off the cork part of the tenon. And so I just kind of sort of clean off all of that stuff because it gets kind of gunky. And that's ready to go. Same thing with the lower joint. And that's done. Now, occasionally you want to inspect these uh, for, for any problems that you might have, like if you have uh, excessive clicking or if any of the keys become sluggish, you want to make sure that, uh, that you get it checked out as soon as possible because it can create damage on other parts of the instrument. It's important that you understand that if you find a bent key that you shouldn't try to bend them yourself. Uh, these, uh, these are very delicate and you could easily break them, so you always want to take it to a shop to get it fixed if you find anything wrong with it. Uh, one of the, the main culprits of bending is the bridge key that joins the upper joint to the lower joint. Um, and it, if you learned how to assemble it correctly, you'll understand that uh, this bridge key needs to sit on top of the spatula 
in order for it to correctly work. And if it gets bent, it can be fixed, but don't try to fix it yourself because you can break it. So that, that's a pretty important thing to understand. And uh, also the, the corks are pretty important too. If you notice any wobbling when you're putting it together, you know, first of all, if you, if, you, if you do put it together and it's, you're having too much stress or too much uh, trouble getting together, you can put some more cork grease on. And yes, you can use too, more, too much cork grease, but you can also use too little as well. So a little goes a long way. I just spread a little bit on here. And then if it's easier, it's great. How you know it's gonna go bad is if you experience any kind of wobbling here, uh, then you know your cork is getting weak and you probably should get it replaced soon. Also, if there's any cracks in the cork when you're putting it together, if you notice any cracks as you're assembling it, uh, you know it's time to get those fixed as well. It's also good to check the, all of your pads when you have some time. Uh, maybe between classes isn't that time, but uh, when you get home at night, you can uh, spend some time looking at your pads, making sure they're not fraying or splitting, uh, cracking anywhere, or if they've, uh, you know, maybe they have fallen out and you need to, uh, to go find it. And it's a good idea to keep the pad so if it falls out, if you can find it somewhere, then they can, the, the store can match it up with a pad that they already have to replace it a little bit easier because sometimes they can't be, you can't put the pad back in the clarinet. You have to replace it with a new one. So uh, I, I like to be careful of that. And you know, keep in mind that if, if you are experiencing uh, some unnatural sounds out of your clarinet, that uh, it could be the result of some of those pads uh, splitting or cracking or fraying uh, because they need to seal properly on the tone holes in order for the instrument to work correctly. I mentioned earlier that uh, when you take your reed off of your mouthpiece, you wanna be really careful to inspect it for cracks and also not to crack it while you're looking at it. If, you know, if you're uh, experiencing some sounds that are, aren't so pleasant, it could be the result, of, and it often is the result of a bad read, whether it's, uh, it's split or cracked or chipped or uh, any, any of those things. So uh, you just wanna be careful. Now, I, I, I get in the habit of taking my read off every single time I'm finished playing it, playing the clarinet or saxophone. And you'll, you'll notice that some people that leave this mouthpiece cap on all the time. And th this cap is intended to protect it while you're changing your music or, uh, you know, or resting for a long period of time. But if you're gonna put it in your case, it's a good idea to get in the habit of just removing the reed because it can get moldy, they retain moisture, it's a piece of wood. And so uh, a lot of bad things can happen to this and it also accumulates uh, bacteria in the mouthpiece uh, so, you know, just be mindful of this and, and rotate your reeds on a regular basis. Uh, when you do that, you're uh, less susceptible to wearing out your reeds. Uh, I usually like to have three ready to go all the time. I have my favorite, my second favorite, and my third favorite, and I keep those all in my case, and the rest of them stay at home safe and sound. And so the, rotating them will, will give them time to dry out properly. The next thing we're going to do is clean the mouthpiece. So this should be done as often as possible, but not necessarily every time you finish playing it. What we wanna do is this, this uh, mouthpiece brush is just a soft bristle brush that you can purchase at, at your local music store. And you, uh, you would wanna do this in so warm soapy water, like lukewarm soapy water, not necessarily boiling water because you can definitely damage your mouthpiece with that. And then you just wanna use uh, like a dish soap. And so, uh, once again, pretending that I'm using water, you're just gonna brush it out with soap and water all throughout the inside of the mouthpiece and the, the, the edge, edges of it. Don't worry about the cork getting wet. They're intended to get wet. You just wanna dry it off properly when you're finished and then rinse it off, let it dry. Uh, you can swab it out, use your rag to dry it. Paper towels, um, this, this works okay as well and then just uh, you know, clean your mouthpiece out pretty well. And then, uh, and then put the ligature back on, and then the cap, and that's ready to go. And then your barrel back in the case. Uh, I usually wash these pretty regularly. And when you're finished playing it, and you just uh, coil it up and put it back in your case. 
I always want to make sure that I don't lay anything down on top of the case, no rags or anything because they, they can tend to bend the keys. This is meant to uh, fit snugly so that you don't have to, to uh, worry about it moving around too much in the case. So you just put your reed back in there and it's ready to go. I don't usually store this in my case. I keep it elsewhere and we're all done. So I hope this helps and happy practicing.